人共意。Of course, the, what I'm speaking about, of course, is myself and my journey. If you came here tonight to see or hear a solo musician,、um, he would be playing his flute or playing his cello. Well, I am, in that sense, a musician, and the instrument I play is myself. I learnt from a very young age how to play with myself, <laughs> <laughs> and、uh, I became professional. <laughs> Why I did this was that I thought, well, my grandchildren in England would may never see me, but at least I could have something for posterity, right? They, it will be on YouTube forever, which is quite amazing. <laughs> Now, when you think about what the Egyptians had to do to be remembered, right? <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, just now you can go, click, and you're immortal. It's、uh, it's unbelievable. I enjoy my ego tremendously. I. I enjoy my own sense of vanity.、Um, for example, when I was、uh, invited to stay、um, with the Gyoto monks up in, up in their monastery, I mean these guys don't have an image. I'll tell you. So、that. they would、uh, they'd be queuing up for their meals or something, and I'd be going down, and there'd be like a, a mirror, or no, not mirror. There'd be just like a, a piece of glass, a cab, whatever, with a reflection, right? So I'd be walking down. And I catch sight of myself in the reflection. I go, <gasps> and they'd all stop, and they'd all look at me, and I go, <gasps> I'd go, <gasps> oh Brenda, oh Brenda, oh Brenda, Brenda, oh Brenda, oh, you know. And I'd start to kiss my reflection, and they were just pissing themselves, laughing, you know. But that—that's what I meant, you know. Like that variations on on that vanity, I just love it. If if you're in front of it and you make the running, then it's cool. But if it's behind you and it's pushing you and you're not aware of it, then it's deadly. But all these things can be played with; they don't have to be taken seriously. None of it does. That's what I learned. And the other, the other tip I got off an older sailor from Yorkshire, Yorky, Yorky Cockcroft, you were.、Um, he said, "Listen, kid,、um, he said, if, if before you next time, before you start throwing yourself, and throwing yourself means masturbating. I think that's a good image, isn't it? Throwing yourself." He said, "Before." He, Before you start throwing yourself, throwing your sen, he says, lie on your arm until it goes dead, and you can't feel any bloody thing. He says, then when you then when you throw yourself, it'll feel like somebody else. <laughs> That's true. The lip balm one was a joke. This is true. I was told this.、Um, it's an art form. It's an absolute art form. Masturbation. So when I went into this 48-hour marathon,、um, they they were not in the least bit interested in my image or what I felt I was.、Um, they were very confronting, very full-on.、Um, Defence mechanisms were not accepted. All right, you couldn't say,、uh, "Oh well, I I I think I would be 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 better off if I was uh, uh, seeing you rather differently than I see you now." I, I think that you are a splendid fellow, and they say, "Bullshit, bullshit." That's what you think. Tell us what you feel, you know. And of course, I couldn't. I really couldn't because I I just I I could not feel. But I had no idea I couldn't feel until I was in this situation with these people. But the strange thing was, these six Germans were very bright and bubbly and open, and they had strong eye contact. And I would find that so I, it would make me squirm, and I wasn't aware that I was feeling uncomfortable by being looked at so directly and so strongly. I felt I was being attacked. Now this is crazy, right? These guys were just open and loving, but my experience of it was that I was being attacked. And I would constantly find myself in that state of avoidance. I, the, the, to be under this microscope was too much. I felt that marathon was like Saul on the road to Damascus. I was not the same person after that. I'd completely became somebody else. You know. And they said, "All right, stand up." You know, they're about to start the meditation, and I'm, I'm frozen. I'm absolutely frozen. And before, you know, before they, the, 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 he gave a demonstration. This guy, 
And he said, all right, the first stage, 10 minutes fast breathing. Goes. <laughs> and then, after that, you go straight into that, into catharsis. So it's like... And then the third stage is who? 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 Well, I couldn't do any of that. I mean, no, I couldn't. The first, sta the first stage, I'm looking under my blindfold and I'm going, seeing who else is doing what, you know, like through here. And the group leaders are walking around screaming at you. Let go! Let go! Lose control! Lose control! Let go! Let go! Lose control! Okay. So I'm doing this. I'm really getting lightheaded. Bit of slow down. A bit more. And the who was kind of who, who. And the catharsis, well, I just stood there. I, I couldn't cathart, I just stood there. Ah, 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 ah. You know, when I was having sex, right, it would be... And that was it. The woman would jump off, look at me and say, well, is that it? Is that it? Well, I've had farts that have lasted longer. <laughs> that tenderness in me... Um, which I buried quite effectively, could be very much summed up in that song, um, Puff the Magic Dragon. I mean, I totally <laughs> relate to being Puff the Magic Dragon. And as a young child, yes, I, I did have that Jackie Paper, who used to come and visit me and give me sealing wax and paper and other crazy stuff. But of course, one night it happened, Jackie Paper came no more, and Puff ceased his great roar and withdrew into his cave. And I'd be sobbing as a child when I heard that song, Peter, Paul and Mary. And it was so embarrassing. I mean, it can still get to me now. It was a poem about the loss of innocence. So all that tenderness um, where I'd abandoned the dragon and left him in the cave, I mean, much to my, much to my cost, because you can't get rid of a dragon. You get rid of those feelings, you try and hide them, but they come back and they'll bite you in the ass every time. And coming to that group was, again, on the deepest levels, it was about finding that magical child, that dragon, and reconnecting with that. It was amazing. I came out of there feeling like um, I could never, ever be the same person again, and I wasn't. I got my finger bitten off by a dog, right? Bit, bit of a story, I got involved in a dog fight, shouldn't have done. This dog bit off my finger, he was trying to bite the other dog and my finger got in the way. Doom, like a chicken bone it went. The people around me suddenly were running like normal speed and they said, are you alright, friend, are you alright? And I said, ah, oh, dog bit off my finger. <gasps> you know, so they rushed me to the ambulance station. The poor ambulance guy, it was a, he had to drive me 50 k to the hospital. He was very concerned about me. He, I didn't tell him I was a nurse, you know. And so he said, you're all right, you're right. And then he bandaged that up and he put this up on a sling and he put me in the back of the ambulance and then this is the best bit. He got out the um, nitrous oxide. He said, he said, do you think, are you in pain? Now, this is a strange thing. When, when it got bitten, it was like an electric shock, literally an electric shock. And then afterwards, it, the pain was about as bad as if you banged your, you know, uh, with a hammer. You just hit it once. Oh! So that was all right. It was all doable, right? So I'm going like this. And he said, would you, do you, want, um, would you like some nitrous oxide? I said, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I said, ah. Oh. So he gave me the mask. And um, he then was driving. He'd radioed ahead. So the police had stopped all the traffic, right? So I'm lying. And I didn't tell him I was a nurse. And I blocked up the air tube. There's a, there's, a, there's a gap. There's a diaphragm at the front that goes in and out, right, as you breathe the nitrous oxide, right? But if you put your finger over it, and then I started doing dynamic, right? <laughs> and uh, I just, uh, you can bite off all my fingers. I don't care. I was diagnosed... Uh, with advanced prostate cancer uh, that's now um, all over my bones. 
Um, I was given radiation therapy before they realised it was on my bones. But the radiation also had done something else. Um, it had caused me to become incrementally incontinent of urine, right? So I tried, after I'd finished the treatment, went back to work, tried to make out like it wasn't happening, hoped it was going to get better, but it would just dribble. So I'd wound up using all sorts of strategies, like um, uh, women's sanitary napkins, black and gold. I'd stuff them down the front of my pants. So when I got out of the car and I stood up, I'd have at least a chance to get it out before I wet myself. But then I had to come up with all these strategies, right? I'd come into the car park for work, get out, know that I'd have to pee because I'd been driving 50 minutes, and then I'd get my mobile out and I'd pretend I was making a mobile call while I was actually peeing, right? So I'd be leaning on the door like this, I'd be chatting to people, and all the time I'd be peeing. So, you know, you just invent these strategies, right? And at one time I was in Canberra, and I'd had a coffee in this kind of plaza area with a friend, got up to leave, goodbye. And as I stand up, I'm desperate. I really need to pee now. Like, I, I, it has to happen now, otherwise it's just going to be like that, right? And the only place I could see was a permanent concrete bin and a tree, right? <clears throat> so, and everyone's around. It's a busy shopping mall, right? Everyone's walking around, but I've got to do something. So I get in between the tree and the thing, and I do my routine, right? And I'm out, and I'm going, oh, hi, hi. And then, what could happen? What could happen? But around the corner, a person appeared, and I tell you, this person was a nutcase, right? <laughs> I could tell he was a nutcase, because he had big staring eyes, he had huge hair, <laughs> and he was unshaven, and his clothes were all ski with they all finished here and about here, and he was about six foot two, and he was coming along like this. And he, see, I've always, always, always in my life, right, had an ability to attract mad people. <laughs> but anyway, so he's striding towards me like this, right? And I think to myself, what am I going to do? 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 And then, then it happened. I went, fuck off! And I said it that loud, but with complete intention on him. Nobody looked around. Nobody looked around. He was walking straight at me and he went... <laughs> just like that. And I thought... <laughs> yes, so, cancer. Right, bummer. Um, and of course, your sex life. I mean, that's the thing that gets really shot to pieces, right? So, the doctor was telling me, he said, you can try Viagra, which I did. I did try Viagra, which worked for a little while. Uh, very expensive. The uh, doctor was giving me his free samples, God bless him. That doctor gave me a hard time. It worked and it was wonderful while it did, but then it didn't. So I went back to the doctor and I said, what else, is there anything I can do? And he said, he said, well, you can inject yourself. What? I said, what? What do you mean, inject yourself? Yeah, to, to, to get an erection. I said, well, I mean, where, where, do you do the, where do you do the injection? And he said, uh, at the base of the penis. And I went, no, 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 a metal needle. Oh, even though I was a nurse and I gave lots of injections, I just could not imagine <laughs> impaling my poor self upon myself, one prick to another, no! And then, of course, you know, I thought, well, you know, it's bye-bye sex life, you might as well give it a go, I mean, you know. So I bought the packs, and I said to the doctor, I said, well, how do we do it? Do you do, you do uh, house calls? He said, no, no, he said, you have to administer it yourself. I said, oh, all right, okay. So the big day finally came. I'd sabotaged about two or three dates I was going to have with my beloved because I was kind of like, no, I don't want to do it. I do not want to do it. I do not want to impale myself. No. But I thought, no, come on, come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it, boy. You can do it. So the big day came, right? So I start. I start drinking white wine. I start smoking dope. <laughs> oh, fuck this, you know. 
gin and tonic, gin and tonic. Which didn't do any good at all. Because the adrenaline just blows it all away. So I was naked with it, all right? I had to bite the bullet. Ah! So I get out the bath and I, I, I start to draw up the syringe and it's like a diabetic thing and it's got like five, you turn the dial, five, 10, 15, 20, you know? And I thought, oh, I thought, well, how much should I use? And I thought, well, might as well get hung for a wolf as a sheep, right? So I crank it all the way to 20. And I'm sitting on the bath and I'm wearing my glasses and they're all steaming up. I'm having to take the glasses off. And the instructions are saying, don't use the needle if it's bent. Well, of course, I'm shaking like this. And I thought, I won't, I won't get the needle in. And um, I'm holding and then the instructions say, um, one of the side effects is you may get a painful erection that lasts for days. <laughs> well, as I told you, I'm working as a registered nurse at the local hospital. And it said, if this should happen, see your GP, or if it's the weekend, which it was, go to your emergency department at your local hospital. <laughs> nah, nah. I would go into ED, right, and it would go round the hospital like wildfire. Medical confidence, nah. They said, hey, guess what? Premda's in ED and he needs a help with a hard on. Yeah, come on down, come on down. And they all would have casually gone and coming in and picked up the clipboard and saying, so what's the problem? I wasn't, no, I wasn't going to allow myself. I'd rather die. I'd never live it down. And I'm thinking, oh my God, it's come to this. I know. I said, look, old fella, we've been through a lot together, you and I. And I know that you think that me resorting to this is I don't trust you anymore. <laughs> but we all need a helping hand, right? We do. Even that numb one in the Navy helped me, the dead hand. Mind you, I, I, every time I get my blood pressure done now, I get into this, oh, nurse, huh, my fingers are going dead. You see, for me, it's foreplay. Once it's on the hard drive, forget it. So, back to this. And then I do. I say, right, all right, don't look away. Don't look at me, look at me while we're doing it. For the Cyclops, right? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> ah! But bliss, it wasn't that painful. It's more, much more painful putting a needle in here than it is in a fleshy penis, right? That is, that's just simply mechanics, you know. So, oh, it was such a relief. And then, of course, then it says, you have to massage the area. So I get back in the bath and I'm massaging for all I'm worth. And then, after about... 10 minutes, it starts to happen. Boom, 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 Jan, get the police! <laughs> Fucking hell! So, yes, I can't say that I'm, you know, come to some acceptance about my death. I mean, I've never really understood that because I always feel that death is somebody else's business, it's not mine. It's something that, you know, of course I know about the Bardos and the Tibetan Book of the Dead and I've taken ayahuasca and I've been to other dimensions and so on. But, I mean, in, in truth, I don't know. I don't know what, what will happen. I know that in the beginning of my journey, I was a stranger to myself and now that strangeness has turned into a mystery. And now I'm not a stranger to myself. I'm simply a mystery. Rock on. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, guys. Hey, darling, thank you for coming.